episode of AA Computers and Technology. So the thing is, college is starting up now, and I'm not going to have as much time as, I, as I've had in the past to get videos out. Um, so I know over the summer, I tried to promise at least one video a week, and sometimes that really didn't happen because I just didn't have the time during the summer. I'm definitely not going to have the time during school uh, to promise you guys that. So expect maybe, at most, one to two videos a month. That's my goal. Um, maybe I'll overshoot that, maybe I won't, uh, but that's what I'm going to try to do because I have a lot of time constraints. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here in my last video, I had Windows 7 running off a USB flash drive. Just like the Linux distribution, this is a live install of Windows 7. We're running it live off the USB flash drive in this IBM E server under here, which you probably can't see because the desk is blocking it. I probably should have planned that better. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get Windows 7 to run as a live operating system off a USB flash drive today. Well, what exactly are you going to need to install Windows to a flash drive? Well, obviously, first off, you're going to need a flash drive, preferably one that's over 32 gigabytes because it does create a virtual hard drive on the flash drive so you can save all of your progress in Windows, and that's 14 gigabytes itself, and then you have the operating system on top of that. So you're going to need a pretty large flash drive for this. Um, you're also going to need an internet connection to download the software, preferably USB 2.0 on the computer you are using to install Windows to the flash drive and the computer you're booting from. The USB flash drive should also have reasonable read and write speeds because if not, it's going to be absolutely miserable using Windows. Uh, I think I covered everything. Let's go ahead and move over to the screencast. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I've transitioned to my screen recorder and I'm using my actual microphone, so the audio quality should be marginally better at this point because it's so frustrating when I get complaints about audio quality. I mean, who cares? If you're getting the information, don't complain about the audio quality. If you can hear it, don't complain about it. It is so frustrating. It's not like my audio quality is horrible, um, but the Pentax Q has a built-in microphone. It's mono, uh, and people complain about it all the time. So hopefully, since we're using the microphone in this video, I won't get any complaints, but I probably will now because I just went on a rant about it. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Let's go ahead and get back on track. We are going to be using Win2 USB to install Windows 7 to a USB flash drive. Or, or really, this will work for almost any Windows operating system, um, XP or later. So it'll work for Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. I actually did try to use it with Windows XP. I don't know why I said XP or later, but I had some issues with it and just gave up. Uh, do you want to change? Why, why is this popping up? All right. Uh, so Windows XP, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work. It's advertised to work with Windows XP, but I couldn't get Windows XP to work. So you guys can try that out on your own and tell me your results. So first we're gonna have to download the Win2 USB software. So you're gonna open your internet browser and just Google Win, that's W-I-N, two, and you can see I've already Googled it, USB. You're gonna click on the first link. It should be www.easyuefi.com slash win2usb. That's the website you wanna to go to. It gives you a whole bunch of information here. You can read that when you get to the site, but I'm not gonna go through it right now. We're gonna scroll down. We want the free version, obviously. Um, at least that's the version I'm using. I mean, I guess you can support them and buy the professional and enterprise ones, uh, but I prefer to stick with the free version because it's free, obviously. So you're just gonna click download, and it should download it to whichever folder you have your download set to. Continue download, yes. All right, close this out. And in my case, it's under downloads, right here. And you can see all the benchmarks that I was using earlier uh, for the e-machine, or not e-machine, but the IBM e-server. I just deleted all those, so you can see this is the file that we want, Win2 USB setup. You're gonna double click on that, go through the installation process, and set that all up. If you can't do that, you're really not gonna be able to do anything else in the video, so I'm not gonna go through that. Now, once you have it installed, you're gonna go ahead and open it. Win to USB. Now at this point, you can go ahead and plug your USB flash drive into your PC. And from here, you have two options. 
Okay, so the first option being you can install Windows from an ISO file, which you legally obtain from the internet or some other source. The second option is you can install Windows from a actual operating system disk, either one from the factory or one that you burned yourself. And that's what I'm going to do in this case, but either one works just as well. I just prefer to use the operating system disks since I have a whole collection of operating system disks available to me. So let's go ahead and move out to the camera so we can check that out in action. Here's my copy of Windows 7 Ultimate, obviously one that I burned myself. So you're gonna pop open your DVD drive. I'm not even sure why I'm explaining this, but just put it into your computer. Do I really need to explain this? Come on guys. All right, now you're gonna go back to the Win2 USB software. You're gonna wait for the CD to load or DVD, whichever one you're using. In this case, it's probably gonna be a DVD if you're using Windows 7. Just give it a couple seconds. And I'm gonna wait for it over here to load up. And for some reason, this drive just takes a little bit, um, but eventually we'll get there. I'm probably just gonna cut it at this point. All right, so finally came up our DVD for Windows 7 Ultimate, the 32-bit edition. So you're gonna click on the CD-ROM to USB or DVD-ROM to USB, I mean, whatever you wanna call it. You're gonna select the CD. In this case, my DVD drive is drive D. And you can see right here that it detects this is Windows 7 Ultimate, the 32-bit edition. You're gonna hit next. And from this point, I'm gonna move back to the screen recorder. Now these next few steps are pretty straightforward. Go ahead and select your destination device, which in our case is the USB flash drive. And I only have one USB flash drive plugged in, so I know which one it is. It's disk two. Okay, Windows performance might be impacted. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're using a reasonable flash drive with decent transfer speeds, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. Okay, now it's just gonna format the flash drive to get rid of all the junk on it um, and get it into the proper format to install Windows onto it. Right here, we're gonna wanna put the system partition and the boot partition on the same flash drive. So we're just gonna bubble in both of these to go on the same flash drive, which we have plugged in. Um, the installation mode, I'm gonna leave on VHD. Virtual hard disk size, I also like to leave that standard, but you can increase it if you would like to, and then just go ahead and click next. Obviously, if you have a bigger flash drive, you can increase the virtual hard disk size, um, but for me, I'm just gonna leave it at 14 gigabytes. And now all you have to do is wait. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention that I probably should have is that Windows takes forever to install onto the flash drive. And don't worry, this is 100% normal. It's been about 20 minutes and we're still stuck at 0%. Give it some time, a lot of time actually, and eventually it will install onto the USB flash drive. Now for this next section of the video, I'm gonna use a flash drive that already has Windows 7 Ultimate installed onto it because I don't have an extra two hours to wait for the other one. Um, don't worry, this one went through the exact same process as the flash drive we were using earlier. It's the exact same thing on it. It's just a different flash drive which already has Windows 7 installed. So you're almost there guys. You have one more step and then you can boot into the Windows Live environment. Now for this next step, there's two ways you can go with this, and it depends if your computer is capable of booting from a USB flash drive. The first way, um, all you have to do is set the computer to boot from a USB flash drive in the BIOS. So basically you're just gonna turn your system on, go into your BIOS, which for most systems is either escape, F2, or delete. For this system, I believe it's F2, so go ahead and hit, actually it's delete, I lied. For this system, it's delete, so I went ahead and hit delete, and we are now going into the BIOS. So you're gonna go ahead and go into your boot settings. And right here, I can change the boot priorities right here. I mean, I already have it set to how I like it, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but go ahead and set your flash drive as the primary boot device. Now, if your computer is not capable of booting from a USB flash drive, then you're going to have to go the plop route. 
for this IBM E server, I did have to go the plop route. So I have the USB flash drive plugged in. And for both of these, obviously you're gonna have to plug in your USB flash drive with Windows 7 on it before you boot the computer up. And now we're going to boot into the plop live environment. And if you don't know what plop is, don't worry. I have a video all about it, but basically all it allows you to do is boot from unsupported media. So that means a CD-ROM drive, DVD drive, or in this case, a USB flash drive. So I have a video all about that. I'll post the link in the description. So I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging, don't worry. But from this screen, all we're gonna do, all we're going to do is select boot from a USB flash drive. So I'm gonna grab my keyboard, which should have been in my lap to begin with, but it wasn't. I'm gonna actually change the focus on this camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I am going to go down to USB and hit enter. And from here, if you have a fresh install of Windows 7 on your flash drive, it's going to go through all the initialization process. Um, it's going to pick the right drivers, find the right video resolution, test everything out to make sure it's compatible. Uh, but this is not a fresh install. This is the one that I used for the um, Windows 7 running on dual Pentiums video. So this is not a fresh install. It's just going to boot into Windows. But if you have a fresh install, it's going to go through the initialization process first, and then it will boot into the Windows Live environment. Ta-da! And we are inside the Windows Live environment right now. And if you want to see how well this works, you can go ahead and check out my video of Windows 7 Ultimate running on a dual Pentium 3 machine. And that's that e or not e machine. I don't know why I keep saying e machine. That's that IBM e server I have right behind me. Um, so I'll put the link for that in the description along with the link for the plot video. And even if you don't need to use plot, I would highly recommend checking out the plot video because plot is such a cool piece of software. I didn't know about it until about a month ago and I think it's just awesome. I've been talking about it for the past couple videos. So if you have the chance, if you have the time, go ahead and check out that video. Links in the description. You're not going to be disappointed. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. As far as I'm concerned, everything was nice, quick, and clear. Hopefully I got the point across to you guys. Hopefully you guys understand how to install and run Windows 7 from a flash drive, or even Windows 8 and Windows 10. Once again, not so sure about Windows XP. If you guys want to text that out and tell me, uh, go ahead, because I would really appreciate it. I might actually test it out myself in a couple minutes again uh, and see how that works out, and I'll post the uh, results in the description or in a comment in the video. Uh, because I'm not sure if Windows XP will work with this. That would be cool if it would, though, because uh, I could run some older computers with much older hardware than this uh, from a USB flash drive because, you know, Windows XP is much lighter. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to like this video. And, of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology, whenever that is.